What happens if you keep working on one game with no specific feature requirements, just a general design direction and the commitment to make the game as good as you can, without anything else in your regular daily schedule? My guess is that it would be better than any other game you'd end up making, so this is what I've been trying to do. I want to build a world where complexity emerges meaningfully from a much smaller set of rules, where every feature you add interacts with every other feature. I'm not sure what this will look like in the end, or how to help the player understand everything that's going on, so I started by building some systems. Most games use very unrealistic water for performance. But since water and other fluids commonly show up in games, and everyone has experienced without fluids behave in real life, I believe that more realistic water simulation could lead to interesting and intuitive gameplay elements, like for example, building dams. I used the pipe method of simulating fluids, where the water surface is represented as a 2D grid and the vertices move up and down. Water flows from high to low height, and this naturally creates waves. For rendering, I wrote a simple ray tracing shader. I open sourced the code snippet on GitHub. It's written in Rust and WGSL using the Bevy game engine. The wall building is based off of this open source prototype by Anastasia Opara. This was the prototype that eventually became Tiny Glade, the first major success built in the Bevy game engine. The main unique aspect is that the wall is generated in code in real time out of individual brick meshes, instead of using one large block and adding image textures to make it look like it's made out of a bunch of bricks. This allows for real time drawing of interesting, beautiful shapes. Last year, I was making Fortnite maps and playing a lot of Fortnite. In Fortnite, building is unique because it acts like a shield or block mechanic, and also enables challenging the precise vertical movement. I wanted to explore the idea of combining Tiny Glade's freeform procedural building, where everything you do looks beautiful, with the fast-paced functional building aspect of Fortnite. I used an early commit from the Tiny Glade prototype, when the code was simpler, and Claude Coat helped me update it to the latest version of Bevy and add a first-person character controller. Claude Code is a bit iffy with game dev, but I found it works better in game engines like Bevy, where everything is in code instead of custom file formats like Unity scene files, which are intended to be modified with a GUI. Still, Claude Code messes up a lot and in those cases I take over and try prompting again when I'm further along and can provide better context. I always intended Fortnite to be a prototyping tool for my own IP, but if I could go back a year and a half to when I left my coding job at Google to make indie games, I would not have spent 10 months just doing Fortnite. I think I'd be better off if I had started working on the big game earlier and played a broader variety of games. So that's why I spent last winter just playing games and making a market research site. But now I'm fully focused on making this game as good as I can. So most of that is working on the game. Part of it is working on engine stuff when there isn't anything publicly available that does what I want. And part of it is making videos but everything else is not that relevant. Because my game uses procedurally generated 3D terrain, inspired by Sebastian Lag's tutorials, and because I want the environment to eventually be very interactive, for example, things like erosion should change smoothly as the rain hits the mountain, everything is gonna be very GPU and CPU intensive. So I decided to focus on single player for now to avoid adding networking lag. My idea is to have monsters that you can kill to clear out some terrain, to build and grow villages for your colony and then have NPC villagers that you can assign tasks to, kind of like RimWorld. The first monster I implemented is the spider. I used this GitHub repo to make a spider using two long cubes for each leg and one chunky cube for the body. The spiders move with inverse kinematics. The body moves in some random circles avoiding the mountains and the player walls, and the legs follow along while adapting to the height of the terrain. I'm not very good at handcrafted 3D modeling and animation, so doing everything in code is easier, and I like the emerging gameplay that comes out of it. Rain World was a big aesthetic inspiration, and I wanted to do something like that with low poly 3D. Eventually, it's not going to be this low poly, but I want to keep it simple for now. The terrain manipulation is currently just a bunch of confusing debug parameters, but I have implemented one way of doing interactive terrain manipulation, which is drawing roads. In the future, these roads will define paths for your NPC villagers. As you grow your village and colonize more of the island, you'll manage the villagers with indirect instructions to automate things like building, resources, and helping them live fulfilling personal lives. As far as constructing your village, I've been working on a townscaper-like build mode, but I'm not sure if I want to do it like this. It's easier to build from bird's eye view, but I'm not sure if I want to be switching between first person and bird's eye view. 
The game is years away from full launch, and I don't have a Steam page or even a name for it yet, but if you'd like to support the development, hit subscribe and leave a comment. I'll also be open sourcing more code like the Fluid Simulator, because the Rust and Bevy game development community is still very early stage, even though it's currently the best solution I've found for my game. I've been working with an intern to replace the default WGPU rendering pipeline in Bevy with a Vulkan rendering pipeline, which should increase the frame rate. This is the kind of low level library I want to open source. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you want to dive deeper into how I made this game, I included the tutorials and open source code I used in the description.